All right, y'all. I'm back with another video. And this, I'ma switch the um, switch the sides of the spectrum. The last video, I was talking about football, NFL. This time, I'ma talk about some basketball. I'ma talk about some NBA, and particularly NBA. I'm gonna be talking about the San Antonio Spurs. So, first thing, first thing, first things first. I'm gonna talk about my man Kawhi Leonard winning the Toronto Raptors. As much as I wanted to be pissed off as a Spurs fan that Kawhi Leonard went out not with the Spurs and won a championship with the Toronto Raptors, and I wanted to hate on him whenever he left, pissed off. I was pissed off just like any other Spurs fan was that he wanted to get traded. But you can't, you can't be mad at the guy. He went out and did his thing quietly, humbly, humbly. Um, you know, good guy. He went out and did his thing. Congrats, Kawhi Leonard. I would like to see him stay with the Raptors, but who knows? This free agency, as we go on at the time of this, Kawhi Leonard has not made his decision on where he's going to go. They're still trying to figure that out. Now, I'm going to talk about in this video is the level of disrespect that y'all and the level of just not giving the Spurs their credit where credit is due, and Coach Pop and R.C. Buford and everybody. Because everybody that I talk to says that the Spurs I, – I, I made a prediction. I put on my snap the, uh, the other day, and I was like, mark my words, the Spurs will be – I believe the Spurs will be a top seed in the West next year. You could look at me like I'm crazy or whatnot, but – I'm not saying it's just off of my pure feelings or whatever. I'm speaking off of the past and what I've seen happen, what, what I've seen Greg Popovich do with the squad. He can flat out put together a winning product on the court. And the fact that, that nobody seems to believe that the Spurs can be a top team in a league, a, a very solid team, is just crazy. I'm gonna say this first things first. The Denver, I, I, I'm good. The Denver Nuggets, they beat the Spurs. They, they were the better team. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you two things right now. One, the Spurs would not have been what was this eighth seventh seed. They would have not have been a seventh seed, or they would have not have lost to the Denver Nuggets if if Dejounte Murray was not injured. DeJounte Murray played, they would have been at least, I think they would have been like the sixth seed, maybe one seed, a fifth seed. They wouldn't have been the top seed. But they would have not lost to the Denver Nuggets in that playoff series. If DeJounte Murray played, he would have put the clamps on Jamal Murray. I'm saying this now. DeJounte, what, what was it that DeJounte Jamal Murray scored in game two? It was like he scored like 40-some. I, I forget what it was, but he dropped buckets on the Spurs. I remember. If DeJounte Murray played, the Spurs would have not have lost that series to the Nuggets. They would have won. I don't know if they would have beat the um, the Trailblazers. I, I don't know because poor Damian Lillard nice and CJ McCollum. But Jamal Murray would have not have won off on the Spurs like that. The Spurs would have done it better. The only person that we really would have to worry about is, um, what's the big dude's name? Jokic. Jamal Murray would have done none of that shit if DeJounte played. I'm telling y'all that right now. So, let's look at the Spurs roster. They have, and you want to talk about they don't have big men, whatever, whatever. I think about the 2013, the year that the Spurs lost to the Heat in the finals against that crazy shot against Ray Allen. Um, that team was basically all guards. Uh, Gary Neal, Danny Green, Tony Parker, Corey Joseph, Nando DeColo. Um, basically, that team was all guards. I think the only big man they had was Duncan, Thiago Splitter, and uh, Dewan Blair. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they had there was that team was basically guards. So that's what this this team is this year. Um, I think I forget I can't name the, everybody that was on that roster, but that team they had I think they had fucking Tracy McGrady on that team too. Patty Mills was on the squad too. Patty Mills. I think, I don't know if I said him or not, but uh, yeah. So you got DeJounte Murray. He's going to be a superstar in the league. I don't think, I think, just honestly, DeJounte, his best season could probably be something like 
between 17 and I don't think he'll be over a 20 points per game score. He not under pop. He can be like his best season could be something like 18 points, six assists, like probably something like four rebounds, maybe even more. Because you see Westbrook, he can. Well, that's different. He'd be stat chasing or whatever. But Dejounte can put up like. Like I said, six assists, like something like four, maybe even more, maybe less rebounds, like two steals, one and a half blocks on like 50 percent shooting. Maybe he could surprise people and be even better than that. But that's that's what that what I feel like DeJounte, his like his peak would be. Um, But on. But all, all at the same time, setting up his team, running the offense, doing the great, being the best defender on the court. Then you have Derek White. Derek White is actually older than DeJounte, but he's been in the league less years. I actually see Derek White having a better year. I, I, I see I see Derek White having a better year this year than DeJounte is going to have. I feel like this, Derek White is going to have score more points. That's the only thing, basically. Only score more. Derek, I can see Derek White putting up like something like 15 points this year. This upcoming year, something like that. I think he would he put up like eleven. Um, you still got uh two all stars and uh, Lamarcus Aldridge and Demar Derozan, and Lamarcus proven he can drop buckets enough. He's a little older now, but he's proven with Portland and with the Spurs that he can get it done in the playoffs. Demar Derozan still a solid playmaker, still solid, still, I still you know. DeMar DeRozan. Next year, I see Marcus Aldridge probably still leading the Spurs in scoring. I don't think he'll be a 20-point-per-game score, but something like 19 points. Same with DeMar. I think DeMar and Marcus are going to still be the Spurs' leading scorers, still be the Spurs' best, most reliable. I'm not going to say the best players, but the most, the go-to players. They're veterans. Pop likes to lean on his veteran guys. He's going to call most of the plays for them, and then all the other guys are just going to have to, you know, fit in where they fit in. So you got that. You got a, a potential superstar in DeJounte. You have a very solid player in Derek White. In the long run, though, DeJounte is going to be the better player than Derek. But this coming season, I see Derek having a better season. So you got Brent Forbes. So not even Brent Forbes. You got a whole bunch of knockdown three-point shooters. So much floor spacing. Oh, yeah. You had the best three-point shooter percentage-wise in Davis Bertans. You got Marco Bellinelli. I can see them actually trading him before the season or during the season. I don't know. Um, Patty Mills, he's done it. He's been there. Um, like I said, Brent Forbes. Then you got, they just picked up Damari Carroll. Oh, yeah, my man, they have a guy named Rudy Gay on their team, too. Um, then the rookies. They're probably not going to see the floor much. That's how pop the Spurs do it. They're going to probably play in the D -le uh, G League. All next year. And then you got um you still got Yaka Purtle. I don't know what they're gonna do with um what's do oh shit. Um what's the dude's name? The other big man today, Eubanks, I don't know what they're gonna keep him on the roster or not. Um and then Last but not least, Lonnie Walker. I don't know what he's going to end up being. I don't know if he's going to. Honestly, my concern with him would be if he can stay healthy. He seems like he's so athletic that he plays out of control sometimes, and that scares me. Um, same with DeJounte, and you're seeing him beating towards ACL. But Lonnie Walker, whatever he turns out to be, he could be the next Kawhi, or he could be, I don't know what he can be, but he's a freak athlete. He has a nice jump shot. He has an upside as a defender. Um, and then playing under pop system, he pop can get the best out of him. Oh shit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, I honestly feel like the fact I was reading this article too, and you know how Boogie Cousins, he's a free agent and they were talking about how he, I guess apparently he reached out to Lamar, uh, uh, DeMar DeRozan. And I was reading, and the articles were saying, whoever wrote the article was saying that the Spurs were a fringe playoff contender. I don't know exactly what that means. 
as as a fringe playoff contender. But I basically I think that what they're basically saying is that the Spurs aren't a lock to make the playoffs. And the only re like I said, the only reason the Spurs did not were in a seventh seed was because DeJounte did not play. And I strongly stand by that. I see them not only being making the playoffs, but being one of the best teams in the playoffs to make the playoffs in the West. They're not going to be the best team. They're not even probably not even going to make it very far, but they're going to be, I feel like they're going to be a top seed. They're still young. That's why I say they're not going to make it very far because their their best players are still very young. And LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan are not the guys that are going to lead you to a championship. I'm sorry. Those guys are good. But then they've, Lamar, you've seen DeMar choke against LeBron. You've seen LaMarcus choke in the playoffs when it really, really matters. He can get, he can drop some, but when the games really, really count, I've not seen LaMarcus step up ever. So, but to be a friend's playoff contender, I'm like, yo, man, when will these people learn? Stop counting out the Spurs every year. I remember back when Duncan and they still had. You know, later years, of later Duncan years, later whenever the big three were starting to get a little older. And when this, after, this is before the Spurs even won the championship. Back in like 2012, they were writing off the Spurs. The Spurs are going to make the decline, then they win the championship years later. Do not count out Greg Popovich. Do not count out R.C. Buford. They prove everybody wrong. And I just trying to, I'm just trying to figure out America. When will y'all learn? Stop disrespecting the Spurs. They're not going to. I don't know if they're going to win a champ. They're not going to be a championship team this year. But. I could be wrong about this. They could be. But this team, this Spurs team, is going to be very, very good. They're, they probably have the deepest roster in the NBA. They're very, very, it's going to be crazy. This team is very, very athletic. These The guys that they've picked up, Derek White, DeJounte, and Lonnie, those guys are freak athletes. Lonnie, uh, not Lonnie, DeJounte, his, his long-ass arms, his fucking quick hands on defense. He dunk on anybody. Derek White fucking dunked on Paul Millsap, bro. Then the dude that they picked up in the draft, Luka Samanich, I think that's his name. He's a, he's a pretty good athlete, too. This team's going to be at young, athletic. They're, and you've seen flashes last year of how good this team could be offensively. With the three-point shooting, if they can get Davis Bertans, if he can get hot, Patty Mills make some jump shots. Derek White, he proves his... And then this nigga... Um, What's his name? Bryn Forbes? He's a knockdown. I feel like even Pop said it. He said it feels like every time he shoots it, he's going to make it. So you got spacing around your athletes, spacing around your, your mid-range shooting of um, LaMarcus and DeMar. And then you got like a and then a deep bench. This this is what I've seen in on past Spurs teams that were very, very good. And this is no different. Popovich is going to work his magic. This team is going to be so much better defensively with DeJounte back. And once he gets his rotations right and, you know, figures out what's the best lineup saw, this first team can be very, very good. I'll tell more of this. Stop disrespecting the Spurs. The Spurs will be a very, very good team next year. I'm saying it now. A French playoff contender, I almost laughed at that. Actually, I didn't almost laugh. I did laugh. I'm like, when will y'all people learn? I put on, yeah, like I said, I put on Snap. And I said, yeah, mark my words, the Spurs will be a top seed in the West next year. I strongly believe that. And my friend um, ends up sliding up on it. It's like, he said, hell no, you tripping. I'm like, he says, he says, the Lakers, the Warriors, the um, Nuggets and the who did he say? He said Lakers, Warriors, Nuggets. Who was the last team? I forget. He didn't mention the Spurs. It was some other team, though. I think he said no. I don't even think he said Rockets. He said some other bum ass team. I think he said Jazz. I think he said the Jazz. Lakers, Warriors, Rockets, and Jazz. I don't remember. I'm like, no. Who did he say? It wasn't the Jazz. Damn. Uh, I forget, but I'm like, I was like, no way. The Nuggets are not going to be a better team than Spurs next year. I don't even see, first of all, I don't think they've gotten any better. They're, they're Luka. No, what's the hell's dude's name? Jokic. Nikola Jokic. I said Luka. 
Nikola Jokic is nice. Jamal Murray is nice. But they're not going to be better than the Spurs next year. I'm sorry, Nuggets fans. Y'all won the series. Y'all, first of all, took y'all seven games to beat a team that y'all were supposedly supposed to be better than. Spurs, honestly, still could have won the series if some guys played a little bit better. DeMar DeRozan, I feel like he didn't play as well as he could have. Um, and they weren't really, they really didn't, they weren't, they played hard in game seven, but they just didn't play well. That's what happened. They played hard, but didn't play well. Denver played better. But the Nuggets are not going to be better than the Spurs. If they, even if they have a better record, they're still not going to be the better team. If the Spurs would play them again in the playoffs next year, they would win that series. I don't think OKC is going to be better than the Spurs. I don't believe uh, Portland may be. Portland may be the better team. Better. No, actually, I don't know. Golden State, you saw what they did without KD in the finals. They almost, they still almost beat the Raptors. The only reason they lost is because Clay got injured. But Karma comes back to bite them because whenever they were winning their championships, those those championships that they did win, they were playing against a whole bunch of injured teams the whole time. You know, I remember. So you know, comes what goes around comes around. Um. The Lakers, yeah, they'll probably be the top seed. If not, two seed. The Rockets, who knows? That's a mystery right now. The Jazz are not going to be better than the Spurs. Popovich is going to... The Clippers aren't going to be better than the Spurs either. Even though, Oh, actually, depending on where Kawhi goes. That's tough, that's tough. You could say this is all biased, but I'm telling you, I'm going off what I've seen in the past. Popovich can get it done. Don't count on the Spurs. All right, y'all. I'm out, though. Thanks for listening to me rant. Um, Soon enough, I'll be back with another video. Thanks. See ya.